Jean set up an organisation called Crisis over 20 years ago, and um, uh, Jean's background is, in, is always in working in, with well-being and health yeah, yeah. In, in reality. Yeah. So originally born in, in governing Glasgow mm -hmm. just after the war, um, she's had a, a lifetime working in the well-being and health and uh, general practice industry. Mm -hmm. um, and in 1996, she left uh, practice of uh, a general, general a GPs, general mm -hmm. practice, um, to set up and lead crisis counselling, which currently supports 40,000 clients a year. No, 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 no. We're 40 in our 20 years, 40,000 in our 20 years. It's 2,000 oh, a year. Oh, oh, 2,000 a year, sorry. <laughs> support 40,000 people over 20 years. You can do the maths. Um, 540 student counsellors and has a yearly average of working with 1,500 new referrals. Yeah. That's a lot of people to it's work up with. To 2, up it's to 2,000. Up to 2,000 now. Yeah. That's great. So you lead a team of 95, um, voluntary team, 95 counsellors and yeah. provides guidance and mentoring to student counsellors, supports and advises partner organisations, delivers employee counselling and training to businesses, mm -hmm. sits on emergency planning committees, mm -hmm. and has recently overseen the bu a building of an ecopod that will provide additional income to the organisation, so yeah. being very socially enterprising. Yeah, they call us the mothership. The mothership. We need to come back <laughs> home for a little while. It's the mothership. Oh, Just tell us a little bit about you had to build that organization. Yep. What did you learn in that 41 years in an organization that you Well, because of my age, I feel as if I lost a lot of time in doing what I really want to do. But I thought, oh, I wish I'd done this 20 years ago. But without the skills of that, mm -hmm. I could never manage the responsibility I've got now. So that 20 years was really a grounding for me to be able to take the confidence. And, and it is a lot of responsibility because I'm, I'm responsible for 95 clinical practices as well as administrative. So I'm, I'm responsible for their clinical practice too. So yeah, that, that grounded me for the other role. A lot of transferable skills. Absolutely. Coming from Everyone. the private sector. Everyone, yeah. everyone, transferable. Wow. And every bit of every bit of negativity came with it. What do you want to do that for? Who, who would go to a counselling centre? You know, it was all, all the NHS staff were like, really it's negative. Very early really negative. Counselling practices. Yeah, I was the first GP in general practice in Argyll and Clyde Health Board. I was the first GP counsellor in general practice in Argyll and Clyde Health Board. First Why ever. was that so innovative at the time? Oh, it was great because um, I really wanted to practice myself. So I got the health board to agree the split role once I had qualified. And because um, I was Erskine Bridge, the people were going off Erskine Bridge like lemmings. We had three in the one day, three suicides in the one day. And it was just, come on, we need to do something. The only thing we had was Dyke Bar Hospital, 52 week waiting list. And weeks. nothing so in between. Yeah, but there was nothing. It didn't matter what what you were going for. It was if you had a bereavement, it was Dyke Bar Hospital. If you were had a marriage breakup, it was Dyke Bar Hospital. You know, there was nothing for people in transitions or any other issue. Hmm. You know, just it was so long. They got clinically depressed, and when once clinical depressions, they are clinical depressions, clinical depression. People don't look at what the cause was. They, they treat the depression. So, what do you think has influenced the the change. I, I find that fascinating. Mm -hmm. That 20, only 20 years ago, mm -hmm. there was one, there was a one-stop shop. Was so, that, that was, was so, that was all we had. Really nothing in the middle. In it. Yeah. So what do you think's changed over those years to well, diversify? Things have changed, but how they're managed has not changed. Okay. Um, the health service, you know, the things that the health service are providing now have changed, but it's kind of model, and a model is set in stone and. So there's still a lot of people who fall through the nets, and I've got to remind myself that we are there for those people. So when I get frustrated about the numbers that we get, you know, coming to us, I think, well, that's who we're here for. These are the numbers who don't fit anywhere, hmm. you know. But we're now becoming the agency of choice. But um, you know, you've got you're the wrong age, the wrong postcode, the wrong type. All of that comes into play. So um, if you're the agency of choice. Uh -huh. um, how did you get to that place, and what is it that makes, um, what is the... Outcomes. 
outcomes, going back to GP practices, outcomes, this person's so much better, this person's back at work much sooner, this person's now re-entered the family system a lot more robustly. Um, you know, the, the outcomes were there, but we're really fighting at the moment not to become a holding service because an awful lot of um, NHS staff are now saying, well, we know we've got to refer you to there, but the waiting list is huge, so they'll, they'll see you until the professional's ready, basically, you know. So we've made it clear we're not a holding service, we're doing therapeutic clinical work here, and we're specialists in our own field. So, um, yeah, so I'm really having to fight this holding service kind of culture that's developing at the moment. So what was it that gave you the idea of leaving a, a secure job in a GP practice to setting up a whole new organisation? I don't know if I can see this on camera, but everybody else thought it was menopause. you <laughs> 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 running at that age, and was you know? it? <laughs> No! <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. It really was talking with the brothers. It was a bit, my brother came out, he was a an officer in the Navy, and he was such a handsome guy. He was six foot two, with big brown eyes, really handsome, really successful. He was on all sorts of aircraft carriers, and he came out, and he lost his identity, and he just went down and down and down, and then he was a, a night watchman, and he was something else, and he, the task of the jobs became more and more menial, and with that, he was just chipped away, and he just started hitting the bottle, and he eventually committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And watching him, and watching people in transition, so. 100% of my work is, because we work with the early years, and our oldest client's 95, oh. so they want to talk about death and dying, and the early years are early years nurture, but they're all making transitions. So we find that our entire client group is making some sort of transition, whether it's to be, I walked into a hospital, a wife, and walked to a widow. Mm. In five minutes, I walked out, you know, so that's what happens to people, and it's making that transition. So we're helping people make transitions. And so it was your personal experience of watching someone having difficulty oh, making yeah. a Oh, because that's why we work so hard with the military, with Poppy Scotland, Glasgow Health and Heroes, and all the military personnel. We work a lot with the military. Erskine Hospital as well. So you took, I'm just trying to, the chain of events. Mm -hmm. your, so your brother died, and you were you already a counsellor that, by that point? No. no. It just happened more or less immediately after. Similar yeah. sort of time. Catalyst, yeah. yeah. And so... Your brother died, you became a counsellor, mm -hmm. but then what gave you the confidence to go and set up this whole new vehicle? <laughs> the menopause. It's just not that as well, but I, would, I was seeing our own patients and then it, another GP would say, could you see one of mine? And I, I was ended up, I was my lunch hours after work, Saturdays, and I thought we need more counsellors. So I went to Hewlett Packard, mm -hmm. it was compact then, and I said, can you give me some money to train some people? And they did, they gave me money, and then this building became available, and we, there was three or four of us to start with, and then we just, again, we linked up with the Institute of Counselling in Glasgow, and then Bill Webster from the Centre for the Grief Journey in Toronto that I knew from our broad, he came over and opened the centre with a marquee for a, a hundred people doing a, a grief seminar. But we're, all of our work's trauma-related. Our key, our key thing is trauma. So these two guys didn't have a plan. Did you have a plan? No. no. I do now. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Did you have a <laughs> business paper. plan? I've got a business plan now, yeah. Did you so have one then? Uh, uh, no. No? What, no. Was plan the plan was to just to just save the world. Yeah, Literally yeah, yeah. save the world. <laughs> but, yeah. But again, it's, um, you know, and I'd say I've got a policy for everything. And if you come into my office and whatever drawer you open, you'll find what you need, whether it's a trafficking policy, whether it's, you name it, it's there. But I just tell people underneath my chaos, there is a system, there looks a system, but there is, we are fully governed. The reason for that is because we're in the third sector and I work with health professionals everywhere and I have got to be twice as prepared as anybody else has. My main ambition is to, if anybody knows anybody that can give me a doctorate, an honorary doctorate, so that I don't ever have to say my qualifications. Oh ever again. At 67 years old, I'm still having to tell people my qualifications because I'm in the third sector. School of life, isn't it's it? it. Yes, uh -huh. so I've got to do that. But yeah, but if you're a doctor, they don't even ask you what your qualifications are. But yeah, that's, um, you know, that's the way we're all. So 21 years running a GP practice, mm -hmm. 21 years running crisis. Uh -huh. um, that's two mature, maturing mm -hmm. organisations. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what tips have you got for us young things here or in the room about Just how don't, you don't you change sure? it. Remain constant. Remain constant. Don't. I, I never used this this until recently. Um, my colleagues will see this mission drift. We've never had mission drift. It's early, and early intervention, matched intervention, and I will not compromise on that. I won't just give somebody who's available um, matched intervention and open-ended. So is that knowing your client? That's it. That's it, no matter what. So that's it. Our client group, we've got 95 therapists, so we can match to any client from that. And what about the organisational developments? Any top Again, don't, don't drift. Galore. No, just keep up to, keep informed, keep constantly informed. I've done five webinars in the last six months. They're brilliant. I just go home and cherry pick with a cup of tea, which one I want to go to. I don't run off to conferences anymore. It's great. <laughs> Emergency Planning Society was great for that because it cost me a fortune to go down to London or Manchester or Birmingham. It's two-day conferences. It's all emergency. I'm an accredited emergency planning officer, but I cannot afford to do all the... Because they're all funded to go. We are not. So I've now found webinars. And I've decided to deliver webinars as well. Yeah. Well, that's what the law cabin. That's what the law cabins for. Yeah. So how will that um, the EcoPod? Um, where did the idea come from, and how will that feed into your organisation? Webinars, because I thought, you know what, I could do this instead of me running all over the place doing this. It was a university that asked us to do some training, but it meant running to Edinburgh for a couple of days, somewhere else for a couple of days, and I thought I could just put something over there and toddle across the car park and do webinars. So is it just a fancy name for a training room? Yeah. Well, of course it is. Okay. But then <laughs> <laughs> you get it funded, yeah. But it's got two Skype rooms in it and that means that we can reach anybody anywhere because our clients, we've got people all over the place just yeah. now, Inverness, Jedburgh, you name it, there we've and got so them. We've got somebody, so we're, we're supervising somebody in Australia right now who was a nurse who we were supervising, who was in a hospice in Glasgow, and she's now transferred on secondment to Australia, and we've given her the same supervisor, so she's right. still, we're still You've supervising. You've global by staying local. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Laziness is good. Laziness. <laughs> Innovation, darling. I'm Innovation. just moving age appropriate, yeah. age appropriate. Just your carbon footprint. That's it, that was what we told, so SIS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Or was it John Swinney? I think it was John Swinney. Uh, they gave you the money. Yeah. Um, when you think back to your original ambition and aspiration for setting up Crisis, I don't know, 21 years ago, and you think about what it was you wanted to create, take yourself there to your ambition. Have you reached that? Have you done it? When did you do it? And what's next? I've reached a process of it. Okay. I've reached a process of it, and I've reached an awful lot more people who want to be doing the same thing. And, um, yeah, we've found a way to do it. And by remaining constant, don't change what you do, change how you do it. Okay. This is why we're going further afield on IT and all of the different, keep up to date with the resources that are available. But without your network, you're lost. You're absolutely lost without the community of all the other enterprises. So we all, the skill sharing, we, we can take contracts in Edinburgh because I've got the Melbourne port. <laughs> <laughs> can you, we all, we're an Edinburgh-based company. I don't know if you can send anybody. Of course we can. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. But we use each other. We use each other all the time and skills here all the time. Okay, so in, in conclusion, have you got any, um, when you're looking back and looking forward in your lifetime of leading, building and enabling social impact through these organisations mm -hmm. and the people you work with, have you got any concluding remarks for the, the people in the room who might be watching but really, really just remain true to what you're doing and just find different ways of doing it. If, you know, suddenly you find that the, the funding's been pulled, just do it differently, but don't change what you do. Just find a different way. There's always a plan B. Always. Plan B. Always a plan B. plan B. Just takes a wee bit of time to find it, but okay. it may come from someone else's idea, but it's always there. It's always there. Thank you, Jean.